So today we will discuss about a new topic which is cathode oscilloscope. Cathode oscilloscope is an electronic device which is used to convert electronic signals or we can simply write as electrical signals into visual signals electrical signals into the visual signals now what does the device uh, do and how is it helpful to us it is helpful in terms of measuring voltages it is helpful to measure voltages measure time voltages can be both voltages ac as well as uh, dc voltages time as well as displaying the time displaying the waveform displaying the visual waveform of the voltage and time of a wave displaying the waveform of the voltage and time of the electron beam on the screen so it is also used for displaying the waveform of the beam waveform of the beam or voltage waveform of the beam through the voltage so it displays the waveform of the beam through the voltage now let us discuss about the mechanism of cathode ray oscilloscope cathode ray oscilloscope first here includes a filament which is known as the heating filament this heating filament uh, is made up of uh, mostly tungsten or cadmium whereas this heating filament is connected to a battery source a high voltage battery source and over this heating filament we have a cathode over this heating filament we have cathode first tungsten is mostly used in the heating filament while for cathode we mostly use strontium We also we, we use strontium in cathode as cathode carries negative charge. Right? Right? So that is a uh, heating filament, it's our cathode. Here we have our anode. Here we have a metal plate. This metal plate acts as anode. Metal plate acts as anode, which is having of course a positive charge. Afterwards, we are having an accelerating metal plate accelerating anode we also discussed its function in the video and uh, here we have accelerating anode and these are some plates these are some deflection plates these are known as deflecting plates these defla deflecting plates are used to deflect the electron beam which would be emerged from this uh, you know what heating filament or and the cathode so the whole mechanism which here has been explained which is which includes the cathode heating filament and 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 anode which includes both the uh, ordinary anode and the accelerating anode by the way this anode is not a simple anode it contains holes inside it it contains holes uh, perforating holes this anode contains perforating holes through which the electron beam would be passed as we have already discussed in the electron gun mechanism that this uh, metal plate contains a hole through which the electron beams will be passed they can be a single or multiple holes depending upon the anode so cathode and perforating holes anode accelerating anode and the heating filament collectively form the electron gun part collectively form the electron gun part of the cathode ray oscilloscope cathode ray oscilloscope uh, consists of two parts two parts first is the cathode ray oscilloscope's uh, electron gun and second part is the deflection system if which contains the deflecting plates deflection system which contains the deflecting plates deflecting plates are of two categories first we have the wire plates and second we are having the x plates y plates and x plates and last but not least we are having the third part of the cathode oscilloscope which is the fluorescent screen fluorescent 
screen. This fluorescent screen is made up of zinc sulfide. It is made up of fluorescent salts. Fluorescent salts are those salts which uh, glow when electrons strike over them. So fluorescent salts are salts which glow when electron strike. Right? So fluorescent salts such as zinc sulfide zinc sulfide is an example of what is an example of the fluorescent salt which is used to make this fluorescent screen which will allow the electron beam to glow and turn the electronic signals, electrical signals into the visual signals. Here we have done the anatomy part. There first we have electron gun which consists of the following elements. Second we have the deflection system which consists of the deflecting plates and third we have the fluorescent screen where the light would glow, where the electron beam would glow. So first what happens when we pass high voltage to the heating filament, tungsten filament through the battery source. This tungsten filament converts the electrical energy, converts electrical energy into heat energy. Uh, it produces heat electrically by converting the electrical energy into the heat energy due to which the cathode which is present here. The cathode which is present here gains uh, you know what energy by this heat energy. How does it get energy from the heat energy? Because the electrons of the cathode, the electrons of cathode get excited, they gain the heat energy, their internal kinetic energy increases. As their internal kinetic energy increases, the vibratory motion increases, vibratory motion increases, so it causes to emit electrons from its uh, metal surface and that causes to emit out electrons from its metal surface right as these electrons are emitted from this metal surface we know that in front of this uh, bundle of from these bundle of electrons here are the electrons which are being emitted from this uh, you know what here are these electrons which are being emitted from the cathode we have electrons here. Now when these electrons are emitted out from the cathode, what will happen? The anode which is positively charged attract the negatively charged electrons as opposite charges attract. So as the anode would come and uh, you know what electrons would come to the anode and uh, be attracted towards anode, the electrons would be passing through the hole which is made inside that anode. The electrons would pass through the hole which is made inside that anode because they attract the uh, you know what electrons, the anode attracts electrons due to which the electrons are allowed to pass in a straight line. The electrons are allowed to pass in a straight line or in a form of beam in the form of a beam through these uh, anode as the electron is allowed to move the it passes through the accelerating anode now what is the function of accelerating anode here so as we know that inside this um, electron gun inside this electron gun we have air inside this electron gun we are having air this air consists of gas molecules air consists of gas molecules and uh, as we know that the size of electron is very small size of electron is very small as compared to the gas molecules so when these electrons will collide with the gas molecules when electrons will collide with the gas molecule what will happen the electrons will lose the energy the electrons will lose energy as electrons will lose energy they won't be able to travel fast they won't be able, able to travel fast as well as uh, cover farther distances very far right which means um, electrons 
if collided with the gas molecules won't be able to cover such a long distance and pass to the fluorescent screen to be visual or be uh, you know what visible to us so in that sense we use a metal plate we use a metal plate which is known as the accelerating anode metal plate which is accelerating anode this metal plate known as accelerating anode allows the light allows the electron beam to flow in a straight line but this accelerating anode contains high voltage this accelerating anode contains high voltage then that of the anode which was simply made by metal plate so which was containing perforated holes accelerating anode contains higher voltage than the previous one anode so we can say that uh, this allows the electron beam to uh, gain that voltage and move the electron beam quicker than the previous anode which means the speed of the electron beam would be increased by passing through the accelerating anode the speed is increased when we pass the electron beam through the accelerating anode and as the speed of the accelerate of the electron beam passing through the accelerating anode increases what will happen they will be able to cross the gas molecule they would be able to resist the friction they will be able to surpass resistance they would be able to surpass resistance which is caused due to the gas molecules they would be able to surpass the resistance which is caused due to the gas molecules or we can also say that the friction which is created to the gas molecules afterwards as it passes straight with an accelerating uh, speed it collides with the wire plates now what are wire plates here wire plates are those plates which are themselves horizontal in nature wire plates are horizontal but they deflect the light they deflect the electron beam deflect electron beam in upward and downward direction they deflect electron beam in upward and downward direction which means it deflects the electron beam in vertical direction overall so this wire plate is y and this one wire plate may be named as y dash so when electron beams pass through these wire plates the wire plates causes electron beams to deflect in vertical direction vertical deflection occurs which means electron beam deflects from upward to downward from upward to downward from y dash to from y to y dash and from the y dash to y so this causes the electron beam to move vertically uh, upward to downward and from downward to upward which causes vertical deflection vertical deflection right so this uh, is what we call as y plate why do we know, name it as y plate because it causes the electron beam to transfer in y uh, axis which means the electron beams are allowed to uh, deflect in y axis as well as in vertical direction so afterwards when the electron beam passes when the electron beam passes in the vertical direction it uh, collides with the x plate now what is the function of x plate so function of x plate is such that x plate is itself vertical in shape x plate is itself vertical but the x plate allows the electron beam to deflect allows the electron beam to deflect in horizontal direction deflect in horizontal direction deflect in horizontal direction which means left and right direction allows the 
इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम टू डिफ्लेक्ट इन हॉरिजेंटल लेफ्ट एंड राइट डायरेक्शन एज इट अलाउज इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम टू डिफ्लेक्ट इन हॉरिजेंटल और लेफ्ट एंड राइट डायरेक्शन द इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम इज यू नो वर्ड डिफ्लेक्टेड इन द हॉरिजेंटल डायरेक्शन हॉरिजेंटल डिफ्लेक्शन टेक्स प्लेस हॉरिजेंटल डिफ्लेक्शन टेक्स प्लेस ऑफ द हॉरिजेंटल डिफ्लेक्शन of the electron beam takes place when the electron beam is passed through the uh, x plates and of course that uh, is named as x plates because it causes deflection in the x axis in the uh, horizontal uh, in the horizontal direction and which causes horizontal deflection so now waves are deflected in horizontal direction uh i guess it's not a 3d image so it would be uh, a bit hard to, for me to explain uh and illustrate what is uh the type of wave formed here it would be quite hard to form the left and right wave here so we are just uh, imagining it right as it is not a 3d image afterwards when the light is passed through the x and y plates and deflected into a uh, horizontal direction horizontal deflection as well as in vertical deflection respectively the waves the the electron beam is scattered over what the electron beam first moves upward and downward and then moves left and right which causes electron beam to uh, scatter on the fluorescent screen which causes electron beam to scatter on the fluorescent screen in such a manner to scatter on the fluorescent screen on in such a manner that the fluorescent in screen creates an angular 3d image 3d uh, you know what visual of the electron beam in all directions as first the electron beam moved from upward to downward and then it moved from left to right it created a 3d image not a 3d image but it created a visual which uh, was uh, allowing light to you know what pass in all the directions right from upward to downward and from left to right uh, light was allowed to pass in all directions as light was allowed to pass in all directions it was hit scattered to what it was scattered to the fluorescent screen as it uh, got striked with the fluorescent screen uh, the light the electrons uh, you know what uh, striked the thing the fluorescent salts which caused the salts or the fluorescent screen to glow as the fluorescent screen was allowed to glow it was able to you know what produce a visual form of what a visual form of the voltage which is being applied now what is the actual um we can say the actual uh, use and how do we use actually the cathode oscilloscope that was only the internal structure and mechanism now we will discuss about the external structure and how do we utilize a uh, cathode oscilloscope uh, to find new readings so let's go on to our computer screen and check it out now what are the four controls these four controls includes number 1 number 1 it is x axis <coughs> x axis <coughs> x axis number 2 y axis it's y axis and number third we are having y gain y gain and fourth what we are having force we are having uh, 
time is. Time is. So these are the four major parts, four major controls of the uh, basic oscilloscope and where these parts are. First, let us discuss about the x-axis. So x-axis here is uh, signified by this symbol. Here it is, uh, this uh, part is known as the x-axis from where we provide the input of voltage for the x plates and as we provided the input of voltage for x plates uh, the input of our voltage of x plates uh, you know what allows the x plates to deflect the electron beam to deflect the electron beam into left and right direction or we can also say in the horizontal direction or we can simply say it in two words that horizontal deflection occurs so x x x plates cause horizontal deflection and horizontal deflection is done when we provide input of voltage inside that uh, you know what uh, x axis and x axis what is the major function of x axis x axis is uh, responsible for tracing the <coughs> signals uh, x axis is responsible for tracing the electron beam as we know the electron beam travels from left to right in the horizontal direction as it deflects horizontally so the x axis traces the horizontal deflection traces the uh, deflection of the you know direction from left to right to the center where to the center of the screen so as we know that whenever we are watching towards an oscilloscope uh, the center point uh, is a point where uh, the screen, you know what, we can also say the screen is uh, most visible and most clarified. So, it would be, you know what, accumulated, it would be saturated over a single point which is known as bright spot. This point where uh, the x axis will trace the horizontal deflection which was scattered in the left and right direction into the center of the screen is known as x axis x axis it is done by x axis actually uh, this is done by x axis and uh, this point where the x axis traces the left and right uh, uh, you know what deflections of the electron beam is known as bright spot This point where this is joined, where the uh, left and right uh, deflection is uh, concentrated, is known as bright spot. Here, the light is concentrated, saturated, uh, which appears to us in the form of a um, you know what graph of the voltage, right? This is bright spot, and uh, this is. Uh, you know what the concentration the concentration takes place with the help of x axis x axis causes or causes to trace the left and right direction into a single uh, center of the you know what sport direction center of the screen direction afterwards we are having y axis y axis is having the similar function y axis causes the you know what y first of all y axis uh, is the point which is present here it's present quite here and the plug or you know what a socket from in which the plug is opened uh, is the place from where we insert the input for the y plates of the oscilloscope it is the place where we input the voltage the source of voltage for the passage of uh, voltage into the y plates why do we need voltage of course we need it for the deflection of waves in electron beams into upward and downward direction as we are supposed to do this so 
this is done with the help of y axis and y axis basically what does it do y axis uh, transfers or traces the electron beams from the upside to downside direction as we know that these are uh, deflected vertically in vertical direction and thus known as vertical deflection so this vertical deflection is traced with the help of the y axis into the center of the screen known as the bright spot into the center of the screen known as bright spot so x y axis is similar to the x axis but it is used to trace the electron beams from the upside and downward uh, downside part which is known as a vertical deflection into the center part of the the screen which is known as bright spot afterwards um, a key point here which is remaining to be discussed is that x axis is used to measure the time which means this x axis which is going downwards the x axis which is present here represents the time right if you are taking it as a graph so this would be a graph of voltage against time y axis here here would be the y axis vertical side which would be having a voltage whereas uh, the horizontal side or x axis would be having the time so time is used to is uh, being measured with the help of x axis whereas the voltage is being measured with the help of y axis voltage is being measured with the help of y axis and time is being measured with the help of x axis afterwards we are having y gain what is y gain y gain is that uh, sort of dimmer which is present uh, on the upper side of the oscilloscope with, over which we have written the word vertical so here this is known as y gain what is y gain used for y gain is simply used for increasing the amplitude is simply used for increasing the amplitude of the electron beam as we know that electron beam is formed in the center of the screen so this is in center of the screen as we can see there are crusts and troughs and crusts and troughs made here which show actually the you know what voltage of the particular source as well as the time of the particular source which we are using to find their voltage and time off right so here we are using what here we are using um the y gain y gain is utilized uh, to find not to find but to increase the amplitude for well, suppose that is amplitude amplitude is increased the crust and troughs are increased it allows to you know what uh, show that uh, these amplitude is increased so this amplitude is increased by increase in voltage deflection by uh, increase whenever we are going to increase the voltage of a vertical deflection so what will happen if you are going to increase the voltage of the vertical deflection then the vertical deflection will cause the the vertical deflection if you are going to increase the voltage of the vertical deflection then the vertical deflection uh, sorry uh, not vertical deflection but if you are going to increase the voltage of the y plates then y plates will cause vertical deflection and as they will cause vertical deflection the vertical deflection uh, is utilized to find the amplitude as you can see that is the vertical side first it is going upside and then going downside so that is a, a direct cause or a direct uh, result of what is a direct result of the vertical deflection of the electron beam so that is done with the help of what with the help of our with the help of the vertical deflection and uh, that is done with the help of y gain y gain basically works on the principle of y axis if you're going to increase the voltages for the y plate then y uh, voltages increase in y plate causes the y gain to get enhanced voltage causes the uh, y gain to increase the amplitude simply in simple words we are going to say that it increases the voltages how it increases the voltages it uh, simply uh, increases the uh, you know what 
voltages of the Y plate to increase the amplitude of this, the amplitude of this uh, wave. Afterwards, we are having time base. Time base is again um, uh, quite simple, which is related to time. So time base is controlled by the horizontal deflection. Time base is controlled by the horizontal deflection. How is it controlled by the horizontal deflection? So as we know that the time base is utilized to find time, is utilized to adjust the time of uh, the particular wave. And that is controlled by this, you know what, little dimmer. And time base is controlled by the horizontal deflection. If we are going to provide more voltages to the X plate, then X plate is going to make a lot of, uh, you know, what horizontal deflection. Horizontal deflection would be increased as horizontal deflection would be increased. The speed of the voltages would be increased. The speed of the volt electron beam would be increased uh, due to which the electron beam would be moving faster as a result of increase of horizontal deflection in the oscilloscope as a result of increase of horizontal deflection in the oscilloscope afterwards there's a complete mechanism behind uh, how does speed increases in the oscilloscope let us discuss that here so basically what happens first the as we can see here we have a table we don't have a table but we have a, a diagram in which we have you know what the current which uh, the voltage which is being increased from negative to positive first uh, what do we do first we increase the voltage from negative to positive and wherever we are gonna uh, adjust that uh, the speed of that oscilloscope with the help of that dimmer known as the time base then what will happen the voltages will increase voltages will increase up to positive so the electrons will move to the right side and then they will uh, immediately come to the uh, zero point they would immediately come to zero and uh, fall down you know what voltages would be uh, immediately vanishing from uh, their side and then again they would be uh, going at the high at the highest point then they would be decreasing to zero and so on the cycle would be going due to which the si speed of the oscill speed of the waves on the oscilloscope are uh, you know what adjusted accordingly and uh, last but not the least we are having the symbol of oscilloscope what is the symbol of oscilloscope cathode ray oscilloscope uh, basically it is known as so symbol of oscilloscope is like this um that is similar to the structure of this wave which is created and this type of wave which is created here is known as the saw tooth created known as saw tooth wave or we can also call it sawtooth signal or sawtooth voltage right this is a wave of voltage and this is created uh, due to the sawtooth uh, due to the immediate increase in voltage and then sudden decrease in the voltage due to which we can uh, say that it refreshes the cycle and it refreshes the cycle of the voltage as it refreshes the cycle as it refreshes the cycle the speed of the wave is increased and again uh, the voltage is moved from left to right left to right which causes to form increase in the voltage so this is on a sawtooth wave or sawtooth signal and last but not the least we have our final point which is a symbol of cathode oscilloscope this is a symbol of cathode oscilloscope i am just trying to uh, draw one here oops here we go um this seems to be a bit inaccurate Let's uh, try to draw.
um i guess it's quite hard to draw uh, i hope you got the point that uh, this all that scattered oscilloscope is having a symbol um with a white circle uh, in you know what in between in which we have this uh, sawtooth wave which represents that we have a cathode ray oscilloscope uses can be quite uh, significant which includes the use of you know, what measuring voltages displaying uh, the waveform of voltage as well as measuring the time of the voltage which can be all done with the help of these tools and hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, we shall meet you next time